So spreadsheets are columns and rows. We have columns like column I, and then we have rows like row 15. At the intersection of those columns and rows are cells. So we're gonna go click on cell C7, this first yellow cell, and you're just gonna type your first name and your type your last name. Don't forget your email. And whatever class period you're in. And then your teacher's name, last name is perfectly fine, and teacher's email. That's all we're doing on this first tab. It's called Welcome down here at the bottom. Now it's kind of hiding, you can't see it right now, but this is the Welcome tab. I'm gonna click on the next tab, which is called Step 1. So I'm gonna click on the next tab, Step 1. It says, hey, hello, Desiree, because I put my name on the other sheet. It already knows my name. That's awesome. So let's practice some cool things. A spreadsheet can organize data. So let's try typing some things into a cell. Let's go click on G10 and type hello and press enter. And let's go back to H15 and type welcome and I12 and 1901. So I can make columns wider. Again, columns like this is column G. I can make this column wider. If I put my mouse through the G and the H, it turns that double-headed arrow. I can grab and make it wider, or I can just make it smaller and make it way more narrow. So again, I'm going to do that with column H. I'm going to make it really wide, and then I'm going to make it really narrow. This 1901, I'm going to change this so this row is taller. So over here on the left, I can click on this between the 12 and the 13 and make this row taller. I, while that cell is selected, this I12 cell is selected, I could even make the font bigger. So again, just simple things you can do with a spreadsheet. We can type, we can make the columns and rows wider and taller. Let's move on to step two. Step two says, did you know that each box in a spreadsheet is called a cell? So like this is cell C6. You name each cell by first listing the letter of the column the cell is in, followed by the number of the row. So we're gonna practice naming each of the yellow cells by typing in the cell address. So again, when you're done, you'll see something special pop up. So this is column B, row 12. Well, I'm gonna type B12. Column E, Row 13, hey look, it even says excellent, so I know I did it correctly. I6, I6, again it says excellent. And H18, and only because I know it's hiding down here, there's another one in A21. I type A21 and I get another excellent. If you did them all correctly, A3 should now say wonderful job. So if you did them all correctly, a3 will now say, wonderful job. Your turn. So now we're going to click on step three. It says, great, you're doing great so far. Now there's something about spreadsheets that are really cool. Did you know each cell is actually a mini calculator? That's correct. The trick is to using a spreadsheet as a calculator is to start your math expression with an equal sign. For each of the math expressions below, Click on the cell and type an equal sign in front of the math expression. So this says 3 plus 4 plus 5. So 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 5. The answer should be 12. So I'm going to click on this cell once to activate it. I'm going to double click in front of the 3. Or just click on the cell and move my mouse using the arrow keys. See, I can move the cursor on my mouse. So I'm going to put the cursor in front of that 3 and type the equal sign. And I press enter. The answer is 12. Now here's something that's really cool on spreadsheets that they didn't kind of talk about here. 3 plus 4 plus 5. It says the formula, this is the formula bar, the formula says equals 3 plus 4 plus 5. The answer is on the spreadsheet. So let's do this one. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 1, so 21 should be the answer. So on this time, I'm going to come up here into this formula bar. I'm going to click in front of the 4 and type the equal sign. Hey, look, I got a 21. And the next one, again, I'm going to click in front of the 2 in that formula bar. Type the equal sign, and the answer is 22. So take a moment and do yours. Moving on to step four. So it says, now you're ready to write your own formulas. In the cells below, start with an equal sign and write your own formulas. All right, so I'm going to do equals 3 plus 5 
plus 7. 3 plus 5 plus 7 should give me an answer of 15. When I press enter, what do I get? I get 15. So I just realized I forgot to go over a few keys. So over here really quickly, there's your plus sign and your equal sign right next to backspace. There's your minus sign. Shift above the 8 is the star asterisk for multiply. And then down next to this shift key is your divided by sign. So again, equals and plus are here. Minus, multiply, and divide. So again, sorry about that part earlier. So let's do this one again. This time we're going to do equals. Let's go 15 divided by 3. The answer is 5. So again, formula bar. There's the answer on the spreadsheet. Equals some random number times some random number plus 3. Again, we're just playing around. And one more time, equals 87 divided by 3 plus, I can even do parentheses, 8 plus 9. Did I do wrong? Oh, I hit, a, I hit an equal sign instead of a plus. I guess why I got the false. I'm going to press enter and... I get an answer of 46. Again, just random. So these last two can be totally random. So again, the first one is equals 3 plus 5 plus 7. Then equals 15 divided by 3. And then give me two random formulas on step 4. All right, step 5. The next spreadsheet tip you'll try is called cell referencing. That means you refer to a cell instead of typing a number. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back here. It says B4 plus C4 plus D4 b4 plus c4 plus d4, which should give me an answer of 17. So 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 9 is 17. Okay, so I'm going to click in front of the cell again, like we did earlier, and put equal sign there. Hey, look, the answer is 17. So I'm just going to go through each one of these formulas and put an equal sign at the front of it. And you can do the same thing, too. All right, so what it's saying is I can change these numbers around to, let's say that was supposed to be 16 and 21 and 19. And when I change these numbers, I don't have to change the formula because the formula is saying, hey, whatever's in that cell, add it to that one and that one. Or whatever's in that cell, do whatever to it. So again, I can keep changing these numbers and it will automatically adjust the formulas for me. So go ahead and just make sure you put an equal sign in front of every one of these formulas in yellow, and then change the numbers around in row four. All right, step six. So up here at the top, notice this is a really, really big cell. Those cells have been merged together. How did they do that? I'm gonna do it on my Chromebook using the shift key and the arrow keys. So I'm using the shift key and the arrow keys. I'm going to do this selection of cells without using the touchpad. So I'm going to click on this first one here, which is B5. I'm holding down shift. I'm going with the arrow to the right. And then down, 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 down. I'm still holding down shift. And then I let go. Again, I'm going to click on the first cell. I hold down shift, arrow to the right, and down, 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 down. So they're all selected. I'm looking for this button up here. It's called Merge Cells. It's right there. I click Merge Cells. Just so I can see that it's really one cell, I'm just going to type the word hi. And it wasn't even in the directions, but go ahead and change the color or some other color, just so I know you merge the cells, you change the color. That's all we're doing on step six. On step seven says, it's really important to clearly communicate your ideas. Spreadsheets can help organize your thoughts and information. One way to do this is to use the borders icon. So to create borders on the T-chart, create a single line under the words height and width, create a single line between the height and width values. But we're going to, like this example over here, we're going to put a single line underneath the words height and width. So I'm going to click on this one, the word height, which is in B7. I'm holding down shift and clicking to the cell to the right. So they're both selected. Borders is up here next to that fill color, borders, and it says create a single line under the height and width. Right here is the single line. It's the bottom border. I click that. 
Great. Now it says create a single line between the height and width. So I'm going to put a single line right here between the height and width. So I'm going to click on height. I'm holding down the shift key and arrow to the right and then down, 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 down. So they're all selected. Back to that little borders button. And I'm going with this one right here. It's the vertical borders. And while they're selected, didn't really ask you to, but while they're selected, go ahead and change the color so it looks a little different. Great. And last step, step eight. The text you type doesn't always fit into one cell. Use text wrapping to wrap and unwrap text. So it says A5. Click on A5, and we're going to make that wrap into one cell. How do we do that? We're looking for this button actually here. It's called text wrapping. I click the down arrow, and I click wrap. Notice the dial fits on two lines now. You can actually read it. We can also unwrap. So I'm going to click on this cell here. Go to that same wrapping button, but this time instead of doing wrap, I'm going to do overflow. And now it's spilled kind of behind the text. That's perfect. Once you're done, go ahead and turn your assignment in to Google Classroom.